After many years of working in the mountains, Ed had come to stay in Cheyenne. Donovan and the other turbine engines had taken over his old work, and he now spent his time pulling heavy trains over Sherman Hill. He didn't mind. Hard work was hard work, after all. One day, he pulled into the yard with a heavy train, and was turned around for the journey home. That's all the work for today, his engineer said. We'll run home light, as soon as we fill up on coal. But the fireman, who was new, said, Oh, we'll be alright. There's enough to get us back to Cheyenne. Are you sure? The fireman said he was, but the engineer should have known better. Anyways, Ed set off for home. Now, the line over Sherman Hill is neither short nor straight. It twists and winds, and it is many hard miles to the top. Even big engines like Ed need to work hard to pull trains here. It was easier without a train, but because he was low on coal, Ed couldn't make enough steam. Soon, there was no more coal in his tender, and when the last of his steam was used up, he ground to a halt right on the main line. Sorry, said the fireman. I really thought we would have enough. If it were level track, we might have, said the engineer angrily. Now we'll have to call for help. But the fireman looked out of the window and got another idea. What about those old rail ties? The engineer looked. The old wooden ties had just been removed so new ones could be laid. They were rotten, dirty, and soaked with grease and oil. Ed snorted. You want to burn those in my firebox? That's terrible! But his engineer said, The oil in them would burn hot enough to make the steam we need. Right, said the fireman. Let's get them. Ed watched angrily as his crew picked up the ties and threw them into the tender. They shoved the first one into the firebox, and it quickly began to burn. Ed felt warm, and his steam pressure started rising, but he began to feel the soot swirling around in his smoke box. In no time, they were underway again, and thundering toward the top of the hill. The crew burned a few ties at a time, and kept pushing new ones into the firebox. Ed kept making steam, but he felt more and more stuffed up with each tie. At last, they reached the summit, and from there they could drift down to Cheyenne without needing to use any steam. When they arrived, Ed could hardly see. His eyes fogged, and he could barely breathe. Sam was parked next to the water tank, and laughed when he saw Ed struggling toward the roundhouse. Ha! <laughs> everyone says I'm the one who's stuffed up. <laughs> Ed was about to reply when... Uh, 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 choo! He sneezed. A plume of soot flew into the air. And landed right on top of Sam. Me and my big mouth, he muttered. Everyone else in the yard suddenly found it hard to breathe. Not because of the soot but because they were laughing so hard. Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah.